<laughs> Perfektionist. Okay. So I want to talk about phrasing today. Um, you've been to one of my clinics, um, and since you've been to one of my clinics, you kind of know uh, what to expect here. I, I've done this on my on my last clinic tour with Tom Quayle, where I had a bit about phrasing, because um, it has really occurred to me that there seems to be a lot of confusion in the com guitar community about phrasing. I know we, we wanted to work on phrasing for quite some time, but since we're filming this, I wanted to give this intro to make kind of people understand what we're going for today. Um, the way I start this during my clinic is I ask people the question, what do you guys think phrasing is? And I'm not trying to single anybody out for being right or wrong. I don't care about that. I just try to make the point that um, phrasing seems to be a largely misunderstood topic because you get seven hands going up and you get seven entirely different answers. Yeah, so, so some people in, in guitar circles especially will say, well, phrasing is the way you combine your musical phrases. It's making a sentence, making a statement. And I can see why they think that, but unfortunately the, the, fra the, the term phrasing is extremely confusing because if we, if we look at the textbook classical definition of phrasing, you will find that it has nothing to do with coming up with phrases or lines or combining phrases, making sentences, it has nothing to do with that. It has only to do with the execution of a phrase. So it only cares about the how, not about the what. Rhythmic choices, no choices, combining multiple phrases together is not phrasing by definition. And guitar players have been misusing, even great guitar players have been misusing this term uh, for a number of years now. So I'm at actually advocating for, let's find a different term for it. Let's call it line creation or something like that. But let's not use a phrase that has been established for hundreds of years and use it for something different. Because you, you go online, you watch a comment section under a YouTube video, you'll find sentences like, oh, great phrasing, or good playing, but the phrasing needs work. And I, what are we even talking about? Because nobody knows. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm advocating to find some, some common ground here. And I want to read you the, the, the textbook de definition that is on Wikipedia. And I know Wikipedia is not the greatest source on earth, but it, it does get some things right. And the the Definition of phrasing is actually very accurate. So it says musical phrasing is the way a musician shapes a, sen a sequence of notes in a passage of music to allow expression. Much like when speaking English, a phrase may be written identically, so same notes, but may be spoken differently and is named for the interpretation of small units of time known as phrases. A musician accomplishes this by interpreting the music for memory or sheet music by altering tone, tempo, dynamics, articulation, inflection, and other characteristics. No mention of altering the rhythm or the notes. You can have different phrasing by playing the exact same set of notes. Yeah, And I always, I always use this example from one of my tunes, not because it's the greatest example of all times, but, but simply because uh, I can speak for myself. <laughs> And I don't have to take anybody, I don't have to assume anything about, about what somebody else is doing. So uh, some of you guys out there, I'm sure you, you've seen me play this song. It, I always use the, the tune in, in, in itself, um, particularly, the ver particularly the verse. And there's this melody in there that goes something like this. That line, since you know the song, appears twice. And the, the, the iteration I just played was the first time around when it's just an electric piano and the guitar. It's very gentle, very calm, almost like a lullaby. And the second time around, the drums kick in and the bass kicks in and it just becomes ever so slightly more rocking, okay? And it would be bizarre if the drums were rocking out and I would be playing it just like this. So I make certain adjustments. I change my phrasing. I don't change a single note and it becomes this. Okay, 
these are two completely different results derived from the same set of nodes. And I, 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 you, you get these results by changing certain parameters, such as the Wikipedia article stated. Now, one of the most obvious ones in this case is the tone for us guitar players. There's, there's certain intricacies with the guitar that only apply to the electric guitar. It's specifically in the way that I use the electronics on the guitar. Okay, so I'm on the exact same distortion sound, yet I get, get nuances ranging from to I can make it, make it even more extreme and go yeah. What I did in the first example was I, I rolled the volume knob almost all the way down on the guitar to where it's almost zero and I changed to one of the split position pickups which by default has less less output. Now the interesting thing that, that happens is it doesn't really get much quieter. This is pretty much the same volume as this. It's because the distortion compresses. So the, the spikes don't go up like that. It's it's the the overall perceived volume stays the same, but the sound is goes from thin to thick rather than from quiet to loud. If you were in a clean tone, that wouldn't happen because a clean tone doesn't compress in the same way. Um, it just it'd be the, just the distortion has less um, less input signal to work with, but it still compresses it very hard, which is what thins the sound out. Okay, and also I. I um, I support that by choosing my middle finger to pick the note, okay? That becomes really beautiful and gentle. I'm not even using my nails. I have long fingernails, I'm just using the flesh. As opposed to... Yeah, I'm where, which is where I dig in with the pick really hard. So I want you to try that. So stick on a distortion sound and see what nuances you can get out of it by altering the volume pot on the guitar and by changing your pick attack from let's say middle finger to to all out pick okay ah somebody did their homework <laughs> okay. yeah now play the full on version That, that sounds the same, like the same amount of gain. Uh, sorry, full, with, with full on I meant play the, the gainy, play the okay. gainy version. Now play the gainy version for me, please. Do you have a little more gain to go? I, I just want to increase, I don't want to tell you how to set your gain. I just want to, uh, want to exemplify the contrast a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And with a little bit less. Exactly. You might even, for this type of tone that you're having right now, it would probably even switch to the neck pickup. So when you when you have uh, the lower gain setting, that it warms up the sound a bit because it can with certain M settings, it become can become mm -hmm. pretty harsh. Try that. Yeah, I cannot see your right hand right now. Are you using the middle finger? Uh, neck pickup. Yeah, and, and what about the, the, the attack? Are you using the... Um, just the flash of the, flash the middle of finger. finger. Wait a second. Yeah, that's that sounds beautiful. That is a beautiful sound. That's much nicer and warmer than before. Um, actually, you gotta be careful not to... A lot of people snap the string. That's a cool effect. But that's a different thing altogether. Yeah, that's kind of pointless at this point because then you could also use uh, the the pack, uh, the black. For for the type of expression that we're going for, it's it's yeah. pretty pointless. Yeah. Let's talk about the next thing. That is um, the use of vibrato, which is an absolute, absolutely important ingredient in phrasing. Um, listen to the difference versus this is a much different effect than do you have 
a whammy bar on there? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the, 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 the main difference is that this vibrato only goes up and, and returns to the initial pitch, which is very important because if you don't do it, it goes sharp. So you gotta make an effort that it comes back to the original bass pitch. And this one goes around the bass pitch. It's much wider, much more aggressive. Yeah, you gotta be careful here. A lot of people have the tendency, as soon as they reach for the tremolo arm, to just go. Okay? Use it gently. Yeah, I might even, in those case, I may, might even adapt it to the pulse of the music. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it's still a bit narrow and and sh and, and quick. Try to try, try to go for this type of frequency. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh huh. That sounds more pleasing. Yes. Got to be careful with that because especially on a, on a tremolo like you have, it it reacts. So mm -hmm. immediately to anything you do, this one is a bit more delicate. You got to really think think more of holding back than digging in. <laughs> okay, so yeah, and let's hear the finger vibrato. Yeah, I would. You can slightly speed that. I don't like I, personal. It's personal, but I don't like when vibrato sounds too wobbly. Oh, 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 oh. Like starting a car. I like it to be very even, very in tune. And just it's, it's supposed to sound round, not spiky. We talked about vibrato a lot in the past, so. For this part, it depends on the effect, right? Sometimes you want a big bluesy, that type of thing, but for this, Something a little more vocal. If you listen to great vocalists, they have a pretty fast vibrato. Mm -hmm. yeah. And pretty narrow. The not so good vocalists have a vibrato like. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, here's a little trick I do to, to cause some anticipation in the listener. Try this. I wait till the downbeats. I'm counting this in. One, two, three, four. And I wait till the next downbeat for the vibrato to kick in. It just keeps you on the edge of the sea. It's like Oh, when's, when's it gonna happen? Because you expect it, right? And in this case, you're playing a little bit with the, with the, with what the listener is expecting, with the expectation of the listener. Mm -hmm. And you, you feed it to them just in the last second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try it. Yeah, it's still a bit wobbly. Also, I noticed that your guitar neck is shaking quite a bit. You don't need that to do vibrato. Your guitar can be almost perfectly still. It just tells me that you're doing something, you're engaging something that is not perfectly efficient to you because you're doing something that does not alter the pitch. And I only want you to be doing what is necessary because that usually results in the best and freest and most beautiful sound. Okay. I'll try it again. Yeah. Make it a bit, speed it up a little bit, it's still a bit wobbly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, okay. By the way, we're also, we're in a territory of subjectivity here as well. 
that is what I want to hear. That does not mean that that is something that anybody else want to hear. This, what we're doing right now is highly artistic and subjective. I have to, have to admit that, okay? Okay, vibrato covered. Let's talk articulation. That is my pet peeve, because articulation never, never gets talked about in the guitar world. I know never is a strong word, but whoever talks about articulation and phrasing, we all talk about vibrato all day, and it's great, it's important. Um, we talk about tone a lot, but we don't talk about articulation. Articulation is what makes your sound speak. Okay, let me imagine I pick every note. Every note is the same length. I sound like a freaking robot, so monotonous it drives you crazy. Yeah? When I speak, I generally speak in a tight way, but I make certain stops and I cut so certain words short to deliver a point. Like I said, the last word I said, I didn't say point, I said point. Right? It, it emphasizes something that's there. And in the same way, I play around with the duration of the note, not the rhythm of the note, but the duration of the note and the attack of the note. Okay? I could be playing this, this melodic idea in a much simpler fashion. Like, th like this is a weird fingering, right? Why do you have to do that? You could be doing this. so much simpler, right? But there's a couple of re Can you think of a, of a good reason? Why? Because you're doing a pull-off. Yes, I want the pull-off. Playing on two strings, which would be easier, it doesn't work. You have to pick both notes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That is exactly the reason. And to draw the speech anal analogy again, this is more like ba-ba, and this is like ba-ha. Ba-ha. Ba ha, ba ba, ba ba. Right? Think of it like that. There's that. There's no consonant on that second note, if you will, mm -hmm. and that gives it a, a more speech-like quality, which is what we're going for when we're playing melodic lines. Really, we're trying to communicate. And you'll find that some of the greatest guitar players think Andy Timmons, think Joe Satriani, Jeff Beck, Michael Landau, Steve Lukather, people who are known for their phrasing you will find that they have this vocal quality about the way they play, you know, which is why there's such great study material. Okay, so um, that is the, the pull-off bit. And something else happens here. At the same time, I don't want to be, every note to be tied exactly like this, because uh, that also sounds monotonous if I, if I tie everything together. So I, I employ uh, a few ghost notes, for example, this. Do you hear that? I don't go, but I go. I actually use my thumb. I want a warmer attack on that note, and I want to stop it with my palm immediately. Ba -ba -da. Yeah? Okay. Um, and the other thing I'm doing is I'm combining tight notes with short notes. I'm not going... But I always love this contrast. This this comes from like classical music, as especially I had a piano lessons for a while, and they the like classical piano lessons, and they taught me there, there there's like this specific way of playing two notes. There's like a symbol for that where you have a quarter note and then an eighth note, ba da, ba da, and it's not ba da, but it's ba da. It's a very common thing, a very common articulation in classical music, and I kind of it kind of worked its way into my guitar playing. I do it all the time. It's generally pretty helpful for you to vocalize these things. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Have to, I'm not going to make you do it now. <laughs> it doesn't have. It doesn't have to sound nice. It doesn't have to be in tune or anything. It's just. It's just helpful. To, like sometimes when you hear a great jazz solo, you can just sing along. And I'm not seeing the. I'm not seeing the actual notes. I'm just mimicking the contour and more, more importantly the articulation. The articulation really for, for a large percentage is, is, is like an accent. It's like when somebody knows all the words in the language and knows all the grammar and still has a strong accent, it's because of the articulation. 
uh, and, and it's not because of the articulation, it's, it's like having the wrong articulation in music. Makes sense. Yeah? So, the notes are right, the rhythm is right, why doesn't it still sound like mother tongue? Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the articulation. So, uh, obviously we got the, the pull-off bit down, no problem. Let's try this. I'm not really used to, to uh, playing with my thumb, but... Here's the art. Here's the fine art of having this note muted, but not this. So try this first. Yeah, I, I, it might be the connection, but I hear a slight mute on the high note. It sounds like this. Because you can mute a note and still sustain it. But I want a free second note. Yes. 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 Cut that last note even shorter for a more, a more obvious contrast. Yes, you got it. This is exactly how I play it. And this is this gives you the professional edge. This this turns you from a good guitar player into a, a, a guitar player that people really want to listen to. Yeah, play that whole phrase for me, please. Very good. The, there's a bit. It was a bit of inconsistency with the vibrato, but I want to get. Don't want to get into into it too much right now because you stopped the vibrato too early. It was like you. You did this. It kind of kicked in and then dropped out. That is unpleasing. I want to hear it till the very end of the note. There it is, sounding so much better. And the thing is, if you if you would have showed me these things 15 years ago, I probably would have thought, this sounds all the same. All of this sounds the same. That's because you haven't developed the ear for the nuance. And again, the, the listener will hear this on a subconscious level and think, why does this sound better than the other guy? Yeah? It's a, it's, Every, every little thing that I tell you about these things is a subtle difference. But when you have 20 subtle differences in a phrase, you have a vastly different result. Yeah, so we're trying to work on one nuance after the other. It's like uh, cleaning up the room. Your room is a mess. You put one thing out of the way, still is a mess. You put another thing out of the way, still is a mess. You put 15 things, 20 things out of the way, and there it is. It's, it's organized and clean. So it's kind of like that as well with the playing. Um, now, I'm adding a grace note in here as well. Listen to this. And by the way, I'm probably going to put, uh, put an old uh, or a live example of this tune into the, into the video. And chances are I'll be playing it very differently then. Phrasing is one of those things that keep that just keep maturing and probably won't I, I haven't listened to my album in years But I probably played very differently on the album and I probably played differently three years ago live Then I play it now. It, it's it's a thing that keeps evolving as you as you keep making music Yeah uh, listen, listen to this grace note that I'm putting in What what is what what is obvious? What about this note? Is there is there something that comes to mind? Is there something interesting about it? It sounds a bit to me like there's uh, another note in between them, like yeah, well, that's the great two thing. two pull-offs, but uh, the second one is very subtle. Yes, 
That's that's that is the grace note we're talking about. You put it, you put it. I put a grace note above my target note. Do you notice anything about but the timing of that note? Uh, I'm not sure if I know what you mean. Doesn't matter. I'll explain it to you. Here is a, a timed note. Here's a grace note. The grace note is independent of the pulse of the music. Yeah? So you gotta you gotta make a distinction. This note is not in time. If I were to play the tune really fast, the grace note stays at the same tempo. And if I were to do it even slower than the original, the grace note stays fast. The grace note is independent of the pulse of the music. Whereas if I were to do a time hammer on, uh, pull off, it would be this when I do it slow. Or when I do it fast. Yeah, that, that, that stays in time. The grace note is independent of the time. It's fast even on a slow tempo. Because you don't want to perceive it as an actual note. You just want, it per you just want, a, want a bit of icing on the cake. Just a little something to make it sound sound more interesting. Okay, but let's let's try that, please. Yeah, let's isolate it first. Try this. Oh no no no! It's one note, and the irony is that note is not even in the scale. It's an, it's not, but you don't notice that. If I were to play the slow, listen to this. That is awful. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, be, be careful with the, with the low strings. I'm, I'm hearing the D string kick in, I believe. Or the B string, it's hard to tell through Skype. But one of the notes is bleeding in. Yeah, be mindful of that. That's better. That's better. Yeah, so grace note. You can also do a grace note from below, which is more common. This is kind of from classical guitar. You can even slide. You can go to a very Satriani thing. Well, I might start doing that. You can. The, the point is, you can experiment with all these ingredients. Yeah. So grace note, hammer on or pull off, slide up or slide down, but do it out of time. Okay. Oh, great! That was that was totally unintentional, I guess, but it sounded great. Nah. Still confused with the thumb. <laughs> well, then use the pick for now. Dude, don't worry. Use the pick for now. Then you have to use... You can still get a, a ghost note. Use the pick. Don't make it harder for yourself. Yeah. There you go. Mm. Yeah, I cut, remember I cut that, that top note short. Yes. Don't worry. At, at first, all applying all these. This is out of your comfort zone because it's my phrasing. It's it's the phrasing that's natural to me. So it does not mean it's necessarily natural for you, which which means it takes some time. But when the next time you transcribe something and you learn something, I want you to listen for these things. And the next time you write a, a song or a melody, and you want to interpret it on the guitar, I want you to apply these principles. I want you to work with different vibratos, whammy bar. Uh, the typical electric guitar player vibrato or the classical vibrato. It's a beautiful sound. Um, I want you to work with different types of attacks, downstrokes, upstrokes, hybrid picking, thumb, slap it as like slapping the note against the fretboard. I want you to work with with different intensities of attack, different note lengths, grace notes, hammer-ons, pull-offs, all these variables. Okay, pinch harmonics. 
is another thing. You could be doing slightly pinch those notes. It's a very Paul Gilbert thing to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got any questions about that? How do you make your final decision um, <laughs> what to put on an album? Because I can imagine that's pretty hard. Yes, option paralysis, so many ways to go. The truth is, I think our, our, our taste is defined by tradition. Trends and tradition, I would say. But mostly, we've come to accept the, the, the history of rock guitar. This is rock guitar playing that we're doing, the, the big white world of rock guitar playing. There are certain standards as to what good phrasing is. And that's why certain things work and other things sound quirky to us. And I think a lot of listening, for you, a lot of listening is in order. It's, it's going to help you a great deal. And just because now you're aware of these things, you can listen for them. And you see how your favorite players combine them. And the result, ultimately, the result you like best is the one you go for. I think a good exercise for you would be to take a really famous melody and apply different elements of phrasing to it, okay? Let's think super popular, think happy birthday, okay? Just just figure out those notes for me first. Yeah, that, that was no phrasing at all, basically, but I can turn it into... That was my interpretation of that. And that, that is what makes it sound like me. Because nobody else, nobody else's vibrato sounds exactly like mine. Nobody's articulation, nobody, nobody's uh, notes are exactly the same micro length as mine. Yeah, this, is, this, this will turn you into you. Yeah, try that. F figure out the notes first. Don't worry about the phrasing, figure out the notes. And that's all we're going to work with. I want to keep the, the workload minimal. And I can tell you what I, what I would gravitate towards. But this is personal again. I would go for a... I would start with a... First of all, because be, this, is a, this is a very good point for articulation. Nobody plays... Yeah? Most people will play... Articulation. Happy birthday. Happy birth, but happy birthday. You want to give it a bit of a swing. Then I use a... Pull, uh, a hammer on grace note and a little grace note with a bend. Ba yeah. And that's what makes it sound like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the bend grace note is not quite there. That, that requires some extra practice. I'll slow it down for you. I'll, I'll show you what it is. It's this. But it's really snappy. Bye. Now you're, you're doing it too slow. That's why it doesn't sound like a grace note anymore. It's, like, it's not this. It's. Practice this. I want this to be a short impulse and return to pitch immediately. Don't worry about the pull-off. Do only this. No vibrato. The vibrato right now is a habit. I don't want to hear vibrato. It's one impulse. It's one twitch. 
I give it some time before you do it. Because I want you to focus and then do it. Yes. Yeah, but you're, you're adding a little little something to the end of that. I want that to be one twitch and then stand, then I want the pitch to be perfectly still. Yeah, wait, wait longer till you do it. Yes, that's it. Yes. Yes, there you go. Now the whole thing. Bravo. That sounded exactly like I played. Yeah? Uh, that, that doesn't sound robotic anymore. Or stiff. That sounds natural and, and, and vocal-like. It's almost like a soul singer, these types of inflections. You hear that in R&B singers. And that, those things can be an influence. Um, so you picked up uh, the stuff just from listening or more from transcribing stuff? What exactly would you nail it down to? Yeah, I, uh, both. Because transcribing ultimately is super active listening. That's why transcribing, that's why slowing down is a great tool. Because when you slow it down, you hear the, like that pitch on that last note of Happy Birthday. You hear it go up and return to pitch. You don't get that when, you, when, you, when the notes fly by. So these are nuances that you pick up. Transcribing is a great tool for that. And then copying what you're hearing exactly. And then people go, oh, you shouldn't be a copy of someone. No, we're not, we're not doing that as an, for an artistic purpose. We're doing it for a technical purpose. We want to figure out what's going on and then use it in a way that we desire. So I think listening, slowing down even, transcribing and copying is a very good process for that. But active listening, not just listening to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, no, active listening. You have, to, you have to listen with a purpose. You have to listen for those things. And then what you're do, doing already, recording. How about we do this? You, you pick out a melody of yours from one of your albums. And I want you to record it in three diff distinctly different ways. Mm -hmm. And also for us guitarists, I didn't mention this earlier. We kind of touched on it, but I didn't elaborate. The choice of, of the string that you played on is is a huge part in that, the position. Compare this. Okay. Compare it to this. <laughs> That's different, right? How about this? That is more different. That's way different. Now compare the first and the last. That is a huge difference. Yeah. So the choice of string will have a dramatic effect on the outcome. Generally speaking, I like to play stuff lower down on the neck and on the higher strings as opposed to higher up the neck on the lower strings because I think the, the higher strings have a nicer sound. Not because, probably because they're unwound, I'm not sure about that, but mm, has more to do with the fact that there's more string vibrating than down here, where you only have a short bit of string vibrating. Here you have almost the entire scale vibrating. All of that, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm very pleased with your phrasing today, because I remember when you started coming to me for lessons, it sounded, like I described earlier, robotic and stiff, and this was not the case at all now. It sounded very organic, what you played. And you picked up the nuances that I nuances that I showed you. You picked them up immediately. So that's that's some real progress there. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, this also comes from the fact that I'm actually rooted in the whole metal genre, and um, a lot of the stuff you can really hear it 
with uh, high amounts of distortion because it just doesn't matter how hard you pick a string yeah, it yeah. always stays pretty much the same yeah yeah it's hard to it's hard as a listener to 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 hear how hard somebody is picking but even with a lot of distortion how hard you are picking has a huge eff effect on the outcome so yeah. yeah at first it's it's hard to at first everything is hard because you're not you don't know what you're listening for mm. now that i made you aware of it you're gonna you're gonna perceive these things in a much different way and it's your your, your sense of it is becoming gonna become sharper and sharper and sharper and it also helps that you're uh, sort of uh, forcing me to use a clean tone because we barely ever uh, did anything so far with uh, distortion. I think most of, most of our lessons and most of the exercises are strictly clean tones. Yeah, because, yes, that's, that's because, because I don't want any overtones to, I want you to develop your ear and I don't want any overtones to interfere with with your ear like people who are not used to like classical musicians when they hear distortion they cannot hear any mistakes they cannot distinguish mistakes that you're making because they're not used to what distortion does to your signal it's it it, it creates a bit it, it takes a bit of experience to to be able to listen to distorted sounds and be able to distinguish what's going on uh, if you know what i mean uh, but generally speaking, if I were to play these melodies clean, that would make it a different style, and then I would phrase differently. You have an example? Yeah, 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 let's try. Let me switch to a clean tone. So if I were to play this with my pseudo Matheny sound. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't pick as hard. With distortion, I go. I wouldn't use that vibrato. I would use this. But yeah, I might even use less inflections. Maybe I would do this. It's more jazzy. Oh, I hate that word, jazzy. Sorry that I even said it, but um, I would probably go for something like... Yes, that's definitely it. That's very different, a very different touch. Now let me play clean the way I play distorted. Uh, with the same sound, with the same sound. So I'll go... So yeah, that, that, that is a different style though. Different styles utilize different phrasing. <laughs> a lot of stuff to take in. Yeah, I think we're gonna leave it at that. Um, yeah, assignment is take an album melody of yours. And I wanna I want hear three distinctly different versions of it. You can use harmonics, whammy bar, different tones. A wah-wah creates a different phrasing. Um, you, I want you to play it on different sets of strings. I want you to use some palm muting. I want you to you, do one where you only lose, use legato. All those types of things. Apply them to an album melody. Oh, <laughs> All right. <laughs>